Hello, my name is Tony Felici, and I'm the senior pastor here at Holiday Park United Methodist Church in Plum Borough, where Christ is King, the Holy Spirit inspires, people's lives are being transformed on a daily basis, all to the glory of God. And we're so glad that you have joined us for this broadcast today on Cornerstone TV's Faith and Family Channel. Won't you join us to worship our Lord? Faithfulness, O oh God, you wrestle with the sinner's heart. You lead us by still waters and to mercy, and nothing can keep us apart. So remember your people, remember your children, remember your promise, oh God. Your grace is enough, your grace is enough, your grace is enough for me. Great is your love and justice, God of Jacob. You use the weak to lead the strong. You lead us in the song of your salvation. And all your people sing along. So remember. Remember your people, remember your children, remember your promise, oh God. Your grace is enough, your grace is enough, your grace is enough for me. Your grace is enough your grace is enough your grace is enough for me so remember your people remember your children remember your promise oh God your grace your grace is enough, your grace is enough for me. God, I see your grace is enough, I'm covered in your love. Your grace is enough for me, for me. Everyone needs compassion, love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior. The hope of nations. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave.
So take me as you find me, all my fears and failures. Fill my life again. I give my life to follow everything I believe in. Now I surrender. I surrender. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, heroes and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save, He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. Mighty to save forever, author of salvation, heroes and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. You know, I was reflecting on this next song uh, tonight, and uh, <laughs> one, of the, one of the words that they used to use in this song is it says, in the bridge, so heaven meets earth like a sloppy wet kiss. That was like the original lyric. I'm so glad they took it out on this version. But, uh, you know, it does, though, point to one of the things that should reassure us as Christians because we are experiencing God's love. And uh, I know that that's kind of vague sometimes, but I think when we, when we think of instances in our life where we experience love, whether it's from our parents or uh, a spouse or whoever, we understand that in that love, we're sort of free to experience a joy and all the different other aspects um, that love provides us with. And in fact, when God loves us, we see this freedom and liberty for us to sort of be who we are in Christ. And uh, for me, that's really uh, gratifying, but also re uh, reassuring. And so this song, where, How He Loves Us, he is jealous for me. He loves like a hurricane. It's very uh, an intense love. Uh, so if you sing these songs with us as we sing this song tonight. She is jealous for me, loves like a hurricane. I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. When all the love 
of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory and to realize just how beautiful you are and how great your perfections are for me and oh loves us all. Oh, how He loves us. How He loves us Jealous for me, love's like a hurricane. I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. When all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions, eclipsed by glory. And I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your perfections are for me. And oh, how he loves us all. Oh, how he loves us. How he loves us all. Yeah, he loves us, oh, how He loves us, oh, how He loves us, oh, how He loves yes, He loves us, oh, how He loves us, oh, how He loves us, oh, And we are his portion, and he is our prize. Drawn to redemption by the grace in his eyes. If his grace is an ocean, we're all sinking. If heaven meets earth like an unforeseen kiss, and my heart beats violently inside of my chest. I don't have time to maintain these regrets when I think about the way He loves us. Oh, how He loves us. Oh, how He loves us. How he loves us so. If you would pray with me. Lord God, we just gather here tonight to hear your word. And even though it's raining literally around us, Lord, we gather here. It doesn't matter, nothing's stopping us. It's a very powerful message. It's a powerful message of commitment. And Lord, I'm just very grateful to be here tonight in front of you. And Jesus, as we collect to hear your word tonight, let us have open hearts and open minds as Tom brings the message from your word tonight. In your name, amen. Well, I think we all love a good mystery, right? 
for me, and, and when I look at our, our, our young people here tonight, thank you so very, very much. It's great to be with you and to be able to worship our loving God with you. When I was in school, there, there were three things, three pieces of contemporary history at that time, back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, that really just had a disproportionate interest. They just intrigued me. The Vietnam War, Watergate, and the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. Now, I'm going to ask a question of, of all of us here tonight, and, and understand, I, I need to warn you that if you answer this question, you're acknowledging the fact that you're over 60 years of age. But raise your hand if you remember where you were when you heard about the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. Now, for me, it was, I was in third grade. I was in third grade, and I remember uh, we were out at recess and came back in from recess, and Mrs. Bombach, our teacher, she said, boys and girls, I have some very sad news. Uh, that uh, The word is, and we just heard, that uh, President John F. Kennedy has been shot. We don't know how badly he's injured, but, you know, he's, he's been shot. We know that much, and I'll let you know as soon as we, we find out more. And Mrs. Bombach left the room, and I have to tell you how, how that news hit us was, was pretty amazing because she left the room, and you can imagine leaving a class of third graders unattended that it would be just chaos, but there was just dead silence because I think we all understood the significance of that. And it was a little while later that Mrs. Bombatch came back into the room and she said that it was sadder news that, that the president was killed, that he was assassinated. And it was just such a profound event and, and probably had significant impact, at least on the history of that time. Uh, there was question as to whether we would have even gotten involved as a nation in the Vietnam War. Uh, supposedly, President Kennedy had papers that he was going to be signing that would not have escalated our involvement in the war. Now, it's a great mystery, and 54 years later, three quarters of us still don't believe the original report from the Warren Commission and have question about that, you know, was Oswald acting alone. 35 years after that day when I was in third grade, I was part of an outreach in Dallas, Texas, and it was... Um, it was through Christian Sports International, and I remember as I was flying down, and I was with a group of athletes, and we were going to be doing this outreach at a big church in, in uh, Dallas, outside of Dallas, and we were flying into Dallas, and, and so we had all agreed, to, obviously when we said the destination was Dallas, everybody said, you know, if we get a chance, if there's any free time, boy, that'd be pretty cool to get to go to Dealey Plaza and, and see that. And so when we're in the car, we're talking about this, and yeah, we're going to have to make arrangements and make sure that we clear time. Ironically, it was the weekend of the 35th anniversary of the assassination of President Kennedy. And so there was a lot of pomp and circumstance there and, and so forth because it was uh, the 35th anniversary of the event. Well, as we're, as we're driving to the hotel, we're all in, in one big car, it might have even been a van, and we're in this van, and, and all of a sudden we see Elm Street exit, and Elm Street was the street, one of the streets in Dealey Plaza. So whoever was driving the car, hey, you guys mind if we get off here, we'll go right now. Yeah, 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 do that. And so we make a clover leaf and swing off of the exit and come around. And then we don't recognize anything. But as we continue after the cloverleaf, we straighten out and we go on the opposite direction underneath the triple overpass where the um, motorcade went after the president was shot on its way to Parkland Hospital. It would have gone in the other direction, but we were now coming through. And when we went through the triple overpass, all of a sudden we're in Dealey Plaza. And those black and white newsreel pieces that I had seen from the time that I was in third grade, all of a sudden it was just, here it was. This is where this tragic event, historic event, took place. And as I say, it, it's something that, that just intrigues me and has been a part of conversation for all these years. And my brothers and I still sometimes when we get together talk about because, you know, what, what their opinion is or my opinion is as to what happened. And, you know, it's a grand mystery. Now, we all love a mystery. But, you know, one mystery that is even more significant 
than, than anything that would ever happen to mankind is the mystery of Jesus Christ. And you know, it's interesting because in the Old Testament, God had a covenant with his people. But that mystery, the mystery of the new covenant was not revealed, and one significant portion of it was not revealed until Paul literally shared with the church in Ephesus. And he says to them, and what our, our lesson is tonight, what our time together, what we're going to be doing in worship tonight is just looking at the mystery of Christ. Because even to the religious people, even to God's chosen people, they didn't get it. The original covenant was very clear. It was the law. Ten things. Do these, don't do these. But now all of a sudden, Jesus just shook the world from its foundation. Because everything that we knew, and even, even the, the, the religious people of that time didn't get it. Jesus' disciples didn't even get it because how many times does, does Jesus have to correct them and say, ye of little faith, and they didn't get it. When he, when he said that the temple would be destroyed but in three days rebuilt, they're, they're thinking that literally that the, the temple, the physical place of worship would be built. They, they didn't realize that he was talking about himself. People in that era they thought that the first group of Christians were cannibals because when they heard about this is my body that is broken for you and they heard about this idea of communion that literally that they were partaking in the blood and the, 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 the body of, of Christ that was poured out for their sins, they, they didn't understand it. This is a mystery, and, and much like what we talked about last week, about if we only can catch a glimpse of Almighty God and know who He is, it'll change everything about us. It'll change our paradigm. It'll change what we do and why we do it. Well, even more, until we understand the mystery of who Christ is, we're not really in a position to be able to have the purpose of God fulfilled in us. And so tonight, we're going to take a look at, at uh, Paul's uh, letter to the church in Ephesus. And open your Bibles, if you will. We're going to be reading from the uh, third chapter. I'm going to be reading the, the, the third chapter of this wonderful letter to them. And I just have to say, as the way of a, a heading to all of this, this was Paul's letter to a group of Gentiles in, in uh, this Ephesus and in, in this Ephesians church. And what he was writing to them is, we're not stepchildren. We now are taken in through Christ and we have equal footing with God's original chosen people that we are now one in the body of Christ. So I'm going to be reading, and, and, and just uh, for my purposes, I, I wanted to read this tonight. Actually, this is my mom's Bible, and I, I wanted to read uh, from a, a uh, more of a contemporary version of it because it, it's pretty deep. Like any mystery, it's, uh, there are a lot of things that are hidden in there, and so I want to read this in as simple of a translation as I can. I, Paul, the servant of Christ, am here in jail because of you, for preaching that you Gentiles are part of God's house. Now, he was in the jail there because the, the Jewish uh, people were uh, just incensed that this man was going and, and, and saying that this carpenter from, from Galilee was the Messiah. And, and so they rousted the, uh, the Romans uh, who were the authority there. And so he's just acknowledging to, the, to these Gentiles that I'm in jail because of you people. No doubt you already know that God has given me this special work of showing God's favor to you, the Gentiles, as I briefly mentioned before in one of my letters. God himself showed me this secret plan of his that the Gentiles, too, are included in his kindness. And, you know, I liken this to uh, the, one of the parables in the Gospels that uh, where when the wedding feast is planned and the, the family is invited and, and all of the guests are invited... When they don't show, other people are invited. And that's exactly what this message was. It was to the Jews, were to God's chosen people to say, you know what, this is the Savior. And if you don't answer the call, these others now are welcomed in 
to your invitation. I say this to explain to you that I know about these things. In, in, in olden times, God did not share this plan with His people. But now He has revealed it by the Holy Spirit to His apostles and to His prophets. And this is the secret, that the Gentiles will have their full share with the Jews in all of the riches inherited by God's sons. Both are invited to belong to His church and all of God's promises of mighty blessings through Christ apply to them, both when they accept the good news about Christ and what He has done for them. God has given me this wonderful privilege of telling everyone about this plan of His, and He has given me His power and special ability to do it well. You know, we talk many, many times about the excellency of the power being of God and not of us. Praise be to God. In, in fact, he likens it in another letter. He says, praise God, we have this treasure in this life that the excellency of the power is not ours. The excellency of the power is God's. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to fail. We're, we're not going to live up to expectation. But God will never fail. God will never stop being an advocate for us. God, God's plan and God's purpose will never, ever not reach its destination. Just think, though, I did nothing to deserve it, and though I am the most useless Christian that there is, and that's literally what it says in, in the Greek, that he's, he's lower, he puts himself below everyone else, and he says, yet I was the one chosen for the special joy of telling the Gentiles this glad news of the endless treasure available to them in Christ, and to explain to everyone that God is the Savior of the Gentiles too just as he who made all things had secretly planned from the very beginning. God knew this, and that portion of it wasn't revealed. It was revealed in the Old Testament there were, where there were prophecies that, that this good news would be made available to the Gentiles, but not the fact that we would be equal heirs in the kingdom through the church, through the church and after Pentecost. And his reason, to show to all that the rulers in heaven how perfectly wise he was when all of his family, Jews and Gentiles alike, are seen to be joined together in his church. In just the way he had always planned it, through Jesus Christ our Lord, now we can come fearlessly, boldly. Boy, that's something that I pray for you and I pray for me every day of my life that God will just add to our audacity and add to our boldness, that we don't, we're not shy or intimidated by the world and the, and the crazy, crazy circumstances and the, the unbelievable time in which we live. Now we can come fearlessly and right into God's presence, assured of His glad welcome when some with Christ and, and we can trust in Him. So please don't lose heart at what they are doing to me here. And he's saying, look, I'm in jail. Don't worry about that. This is no big deal. This is a small little slice. It is for you that I am suffering, and you should feel honored and encouraged. When I think of the wisdom and scope of his plan, I fall down on my knees and pray to the Father of all great that we are one family of God. Some of them already in heaven, some down here on earth, that out of his glorious unlimited resources, he will give you a mighty inner strengthening of his Holy Spirit. My, oh my, oh my, that his very presence is within us. And I pray that Christ will be more and more at home in your hearts, living within you as you trust in him. May your roots go down deep into the soil of God's marvelous love. And may you be able to feel and understand all of God's children, uh, as all of God's children should, how long, how wide, how deep, and how high his love really is. And to experience this love for yourself though it is so great that you will never see the end of it or fully know or understand it. And so at last you will be filled up with God himself. Now glory be to God who by his mighty power and work within us is able to do far more than we would ever dare to ask or ever dream of, infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, or hope. Praise be to God. When Lucy and I, we talk about blessings in the day, I just, I, I over and over, I just say, thank you, God, for exceeding an abundant blessing. Not just enough, not just to get by, not just sufficient, but for exceeding an abundant. That's how God cares for his people. May he, uh, may he be given the glory forever and ever through endless ages because of his master plan of salvation for the church through Jesus Christ. 
That is the mystery. That is the mystery. And, it, and it's so difficult for us to understand. As a matter of fact, I go so far as to say it's impossible for us to understand in the carnal. We, we cannot begin to understand the depth of God's love for us. We cannot begin to understand His mercy and His grace in the carnal it, 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 as we are. But through the precious gift of faith, God gives us the presence of His Holy Spirit and just like our prayers, in groaning too deep for words, that we can begin to catch a glimpse of this incomprehensible love of God that is in Jesus Christ. I'm so excited when I look at this to be able to say that I am still a student of this. Forty years after making a commitment and making a decision to accept Jesus as my personal Savior, I can honestly tell you that God does a new work in my life every single day. And there's a clarity each and every day that it comes more and more and more into focus. We know the passage from Psalm that says that He'll light up our path for the believer. He'll light up our path like the morning sun. And then it tells us once we get onto that path that He'll brighten it like the noonday sun. So as you're walking on that, he promises to make it brighter and brighter and brighter. As I see it, there are three dimensions, three dimensions, and I, I want to direct your focus to the cross tonight. And, and from that, to me, that is the perfect symbol for the mystery of Jesus Christ. And as we look at that, I believe that there are three dimensions of God's incomprehensible love. And as we can begin to understand this, and again, it is only through that gift of faith of God. But as we begin to understand this, it will literally transform us. And just exactly as Paul wrote to the church in Rome, he said, don't be conformed to this crazy world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds. And, and then you'll know what the good and the right and the perfect purpose of God is for your life. The first dimension is that his love, his incomprehensible love for us is wide enough to include all who believe. Wide enough to include all who believe. I read John 3.16, and we talk about this many times, and, and, and this is just something that um, God has been, been just working and just giving me such a clarity on this beautiful passage, a passage that I've probably said thousands and thousands of times, a passage, one of the first passages uh, as, a, as a new believer that I would just hold on to, that I would cling to that, the promise of that. But God has given me a, a more detailed perspective of it, that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Why? So that whosoever believeth. God's love for us is wide enough to include all. And that's so appropriate. That's why Paul was writing this. Because he's telling the Gentiles, you know, there, there used to be, we, we were outcasts. You guys were outcasts. There was a time when you were either of God, you were born of God, or, or, or you were a, a Gentile. And, and, and the Gentiles, that was not available to them. That was not an, an, an option for them. But praise be to God, you now, and not only are you allowed into the family, but you're an equal heir in all of this. Praise be to God. Jew and Gentile believer now the same, one in Jesus Christ. And we talked a little bit earlier about the, wedding of the, uh, the parable of the wedding feast, and it's so appropriate because that's exactly what this was. God had made this available through Abraham to his chosen people and to that line. But it would also be someone from that line, from that lineage. It would be Jesus that would be the new covenant. That is a dimension of the, this mystery that his arms were wide enough as he was on that cross. That this gift of God is wide enough to encompass all of us. The second dimension is it's long enough to last an eternity. It's not a short-term fix. It's not that we have good and bad days. 
But this is a, a verse uh, from, from Romans when Paul wrote to the, to the church in Romans and he said to them this, these powerful words. And, and I want you to read this with me. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor principalities, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor uh, anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Can you say amen to that? I, oh my, who are we that God would love us that much and that there is nothing, not even we ourselves, that can separate us from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ? We talk many times, God chose us. Praise be to God. Who are we that God, the Creator, would choose us and have a purpose unique to each of us? Praise be to God. And then the third dimension is that it's deep enough. And just look at the depth of that. That it's deep enough to enable us to forgive each other. And boy, this is an important one. In the, in the crazy times that we live, we read, uh, as Paul wrote uh, just a little later, just uh, in the next chapter, he says to them, uh, he's telling these Gentiles, you know, understand this mystery. This is an unbelievable gift that God is giving to you. By His grace... He, he's giving you something that we could never earn in a thousand lifetimes of service. And by his mercy, he's not meeting out the punishment that we've earned. In another passage, he says the wage of sin is death, but the free gift of Almighty God is eternal life in Jesus Christ. And so in this passage, he says to them in, in, in the fourth chapter, he says, get rid of all bitterness. Rage, uh, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you and me. Another way of saying that is um, in the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. It's it leans on that. It's, it, it's nothing that we can withhold. It, as God in His infinite mercy and grace blesses us, accepts us just as we are, we don't have to concern ourselves uh, about you know, that love. That is unconditional. But we now have to be an open vessel and allow that to overflow in our lives to the people that we meet, to the family, to our friends that we extend that same mercy and grace because it's not ours. We're not extending it or we're not withholding it, but it is God who is extending that. Our Sunday school lesson this morning with the little children, it was about the story of Miriam and Moses and, and Moses' sister and about how they let the baby flow down in and Pharaoh's daughter. And, and it's how God blesses other people to help us. And that's exactly what this was. I was thinking of this very point for this evening and about how important that is, that God literally loves us. And that's what I was telling the children this morning, is that God will love you through your mom and dad, through a brother or sister, through a kind act from someone. But it's God's love manifest through someone else in a kind gesture, a kind word, a word of encouragement. And Paul was all about this because all of his letters, they were written to these churches. He would start a church and then basically just keep in touch with them and say, hey, you, I understand, you know, I'm getting a report back and you're doing this well and you're doing this well. You're kind of emphasizing this maybe a little too much, but, you know, be encouraged be encouraged. And that was what this particular chapter in this particular book, he was encouraging the Gentiles there in Ephesus. And he says, be encouraged because you have no idea this incomprehensible love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Praise be to God. I close with a final story. Um, we're going to be, we're, we're planning some uh, trips for the, the, this last part of the year. And I'm very, very excited. We're planning on going up to, um, to Maine, and it's a long, long drive. It's going to be a two-day drive, but we're planning on going up to Maine and to see, uh, of course, Eric, Katie, and, and Gracie. And every time that I see Grace, and we just got to be with them uh, just a, a few weeks ago, we got to be with them, and every time I see that dear little girl, she is just the fulfillment of a promise to me 
about a mustard seed of faithfulness. And it's a, it's a wonderful story. I, I, I've said a, a number of times that um, God blesses me with a word for my family and has so for probably the last 20 years or more. And it is a verse, and it's amazing. How we, we talk about God's word being a living word, but it really truly is because it's amazing to me. It doesn't even make sense. It's a mystery how God can take a passage of Scripture and speak to your high points in a given year, speak to your low points, your challenging points in a year, and then just those day-to-day -day points. But it always has a relevance that, that that one verse will have a meaning. Well, in 2012, <clears throat> right before 2012, I'd been praying about what our word would be for our family for that year. And our word in 2011 was a wonderful passage from Isaiah. And it was a, a passage about trusting in God for our strength. And it, it was so fitting for what the, the blessings that we had that year and, and all of the different circumstances that we had. And it says that even the young, even the proud, even the strong, even when you feel like you're invincible, if you depend upon yourself for your strength, eventually you're going to grow weak, stumble, fall, and die. But then the promise, but... Those who trust in the Lord for our strength will find our strength renewed. We'll rise on wings like eagles. We'll run and not grow weary. We'll walk and not grow weak. Praise be to God. Well, that seemed like that was just powerful and it just spoke to our lives that year so very, very much. We got to the end of that year and it didn't seem like God was giving us a new word. And Lucy had suggested, uh, when I was asking her, is God laying anything on your heart? And she said, I wonder if God wants us to have that verse again. Well, I was kind of going at that premise because we were now just a few days before the end of the year. But on one of the last days of the year, and it may have even been the last day of the year, it may have been the 31st, I went down to Light of Life Mission as I do on Friday mornings. And as I'm going down, I'm going down before the sun is coming up and, and um, it's dark, it's cold, it's kind of spitting snow and I'm freezing in the car, the heat hasn't taken hold yet. And I'm just praying, just as I'm driving and I'm going down there and Father God, these men, God bless them, they're, they're underneath bridges and they're, they're just going to be coming there, they'll congregate and they'll be outside that door when I get there, we'll go into the sanctuary together. And, and they're going to get a meal. But Father, you know, they don't look into the new year, I'm sure, like, like most people do. They don't have hope. They don't have encouragement. Father, just bless me today that I, I can just have a word that would just give them just even a glimmer of hope, a reason to live for the new year. Well, pretty much when I, when I got down there close to the parking lot, someone came on the radio. I was listening to the Christian radio, and someone said about how uh, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 meant so much to them. And so I, I had, and probably a contemporary version, like a good news for modern man, and I'm looking up this particular verse, you know, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, and it was perfect. And it said, in, in, in this translation, it had a one-fold premise and then a two-fold promise. It says, in everything you do, put God first, and he'll give you direction and crown you with success. That's it. That's it. Man, that's simple enough. I can even understand that. In everything we do, put God first, and he'll give us direction and crown us with success. That's it. Man, I park the car, and I go flying into the, to the chapel. Fellas, I got it. Because we had been praying as part of the prayer request at the beginning of chapel for probably a month. I've been praying, hey, if God lays a verse or something, a thought on your heart, you know, we want to pray about that, that maybe that's what God would be encouraging all of us with for this year. And I went in and I said, fellas, I got it. I got it. I know what the verse is for this year. In everything we do, we're going to put God first. And he promises us that he'll then give us direction and crown us with success. Praise be to God. Well, I have to tell you, 2012, the first half of that year, was one of the best six months, six, seven months that we had ever had in our lives. And it was just unbelievable how God was blessing that simple verse. Lucy and I were walking up here at the, the junior high, and it was early, early, early one morning. I can even tell you the day, July 29th. July 29th, and we're walking around the school, and Lucy was just so gracious. I, I, I just love how God speaks to her, and I totally acknowledge that I only can see about 180 degrees in life. 
I only, as a man, I only get about half of it. God blessed creation with women because you see the other 180 degrees. And, and, and I know that any decision that I ever make or anything that we ever do, I desperately seek God's direction through Lucy. What is, he, what is he saying to her? And so Lucy said to me, she said, Honey, it is just so obvious that God has blessed this passage of Scripture for us. And it's just been so meaningful, and it's, God has just blessed our family, and He truly, truly has given us direction and given us success. But I really think that it's time that we bear down a little bit deeper, go, go bore down a little bit deeper, because... I'm afraid that, you know, God doesn't want us to just initial, him to initial our plan. And, and we need to go to him and find out where God is moving and, and plug into what he's doing rather than expecting him to sign off on our agenda, our plan. And Lucy had no idea, I don't think she had any idea the power of what she was saying because for probably a month or two before that, I'd been reading in other translations. And in other translations, if you go to the King James, in, in, in the more, uh, the more uh, traditional translations, it's a threefold premise. Okay, this kind of dumbs it down in a good way. And, and, and I really believe that God knew that me and my brothers at Light of Life, we weren't ready for the, the deeper core sample so he'll just make it real simple. And everything you do, just put me first. Just, just tell the guys that. But now, in, in the next half of the year, we were ready to go a little bit deeper. And in, in, as you read in the King James, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he'll give you direction and crown you with success. It was unbelievable, unbelievable. And, and when Lucy said that, oh my goodness, honey, you have no idea the wisdom of what God just blessed you to say. Well, we were pretty excited about this and we're going to do it. We're going we're to pray and we're not going to tell God what we think he should be doing. We're going to go to God. We're going to seek God. And we're going to find him. And then we're, we're going to do that. We get home and Eric had just graduated in May of that year with his master's degree in special education. But that year, there were no teaching jobs locally. There was a significant cut in the education budget at the state level, and so there weren't a whole lot of positions available. So Eric had put his resume out at a lot of different places. And so when we get home, Eric meets us at the door, and he's all excited. And he says, Mom, Dad, I just got off the phone. I had a, a screening interview for a teaching position. Praise God. Now look over at Lucy and I'm winking at her. That's it. That's what we were talking about at the school up there. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So uh, tell me about it, Eric. So what, what would your subject be? Special education. Oh my goodness. He just got his master's degree in that. He said, Dad, you don't know the half of it. He said, they're looking. They know that I played pro ball. And he said, they're looking for someone that will serve as an assistant baseball coach for a year because their longtime coach of 20 plus years is going to be retiring. And so he's looking to groom someone that can fit into the position of being the, the head coach, the head baseball coach. And this was just like, oh, Eric, this is just like too good to be true. And man, we're celebrating, we're high-fiving and everything like that. We're all just tickled pink. And then I said, oh, by the way, where, where is it? And, and he said, Caribou, Maine. Caribou, Maine? And I'm thinking to myself, I'm trying to think, is that like a suburban area in, near Little Washington? Or? And I said, you mean Maine the state? And he said, yeah, Maine, the state, like 20 hours drive away. Oh, my. Now, here I go, and in my heart, in all honesty, I'm thinking, God, there are no positions available closer than 20 hours drive away. Of course there are. Of course there are. But God, in his infinite wisdom, you've got to trust me, because what I know you don't, it's going to be there that he's going to meet his future wife. It's there that your dear little granddaughter, that's going to be where that's all going to take place. I got a plan. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him. And he'll give us direction and crown us with success. That's a mystery. That's a mystery. And you know what? To the carnal mind, 
We don't get it. The unbelieving world, they just don't get it. They can't get it. And that's why it's so important that we drink this in, that we thank God, and that we allow Him to use us as a living witness to one who is saved. Paul was a marvelous example of a living witness, and it was simply how he lived out his life in humility, never had to say a word. Uh, one of the great uh, evangelists of the 19th century, Charles Spurgeon, he said, uh, be ready to preach at all times and use words when necessary. You know what? May my life and your life be an example, be a testimony not of our accomplishment, not of our achievement, not of that original covenant of doing the right things and making the right choices, but in humility, in our weakness, being strong in Almighty God. Join me as we go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we just say thank you, dear God, for this night. We thank you, Lord, that you allow us to start the week together as a family. Thank you, dear God, for this mystery solved that your perfect love, and Lord, we can't begin to understand this in the carnal. We're just not wired to understand it. Because sin is a part of our nature, it just, it just skews that. Father, the devil lies, and, and we're just filled with insecurity, and, 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 and I know that, that the evil one just lays in the weeds and just yells and screams that grace and mercy are for someone else. Thank you, Lord God, for the encouragement to know that it's for us. It's for us. Jesus, thank you, Lord, for that you, you paid that price, that you died on that cross. Thank you, dear God. Father, we love you because you first loved us. And Father God, we just pray that you would be with us now. Bless us that we can be a blessing. And Father God, every time that we gather as a family, we always have to extend the opportunity. If anyone here tonight, while eyes are closed and heads are bowed, if anyone here tonight wish to renew that commitment, wish to renew that covenant, wish to receive afresh that anointing from Almighty God, and just allow the clarity of that vision to be manifest in you tonight, just raise your hand right where you're seated, and you can put it right back down. Thank you, dear God. This is my public proclamation, Lord, that you are the Lord of my life. Thank you, dear God. Thank you, Father. And Father, now we just pray for your blessing upon those who are here in our family, those who are watching on television. We say thank you, God. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whispers of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleasing that I'm never alone. You're a good Good Father, it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you, it's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. Oh, I've seen many searching for Far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers. Only you provide because you know just what we need before we say a word. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are 
are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. Oh, it's love so undeniable. I, I can hardly speak peace so Unexplainable, I, I can hardly think as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still into love, love of love, love. You're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who you are. It's who you are. I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To you would pray with me. Lord, be with each person as they leave here. Bless them. They've heard your word, and we know, Lord, that faith comes through hearing. And so as they leave this place, Lord, I pray a blessing over them, that they would go into this world and they would share the good news of what you did for us on the cross and the joy that you bring us. In your heavenly name, amen. Once again, thank you for joining us in worship today. And remember, our prayer is that you would be blessed and strengthened by the power of Jesus Christ in your life, and that you would live a life of abundance and fellowship, joy, and liberty. Holiday Park Church is here for you, and we are more than the church. We are a fellowship of believers coming together to declare the glory of the Lord and celebrate Jesus as King. We study the Word, we practice what we learn, and in the process, we grow together, all to the glory of God. May God richly bless you.